Let's get into the story you wrote, an investigative piece, where you say in the fall you broke the story of U.S. intelligence analysts who claimed they were forced to change their reports to show a more favorable result against terrorism. How did yeah, you lock right. onto this, and who, who told them to change? Sure, yeah, that, that's right. The, uh, these analysts work at U.S. Central Command, which is the military headquarters that is running the war against ISIS and has responsibility for the Middle East. Uh, and it came to light last year that uh, one of them had come forward and alleged to the Defense Department's Inspector General, their watchdog, that there were some improprieties going on with the way that their reports about ISIS and the war against ISIS were going. And as we began to investigate that, we found that there were more than 50 analysts, which is a very high number, who had come forward to the Pentagon watchdog and said they thought that their bosses were selectively editing their reports to make it look like the airstrikes against ISIS were having more effect than the analysts really believe that they are. And as we got talking to more people there and people who knew about this controversy, we learned uh, that they had accused their bosses, specifically the people who run the intelligence unit down there, of pushing back against these reports that seemed not to go with the Obama administration's line that the war against ISIS was paying dividends and going well. So very serious allegations of, of manipulating intelligence and, from the analyst's perspective, manipulating it to fit a uh, political point of view. Do you think it went past them to the White House? There's no evidence of that, but it's, it's a great question. One of the things that we found in our reporting is that a lot of these analysts seem to think that it was more that their bosses at Central Command had their own sort of perceptions about what they thought people in power in the administration might want to hear. But there's no evidence that anybody in the White House told them to change these reports uh, or, or tried to doctor them themselves. What's been their response? Well, the president has said and his advisors have also said that they expect analysts to speak freely and candidly, uh, and that they really want only the unvarnished truth. Um, they point out that there have been times where they have said, you know, candidly that the war is not going perhaps as well as they would like. Um, but really what's key here is that the fact that the Pentagon inspector general is now investigating this is a pretty good sign that the people who watch these kinds of things and look into improprieties feel that there may be real cause for concern here, and we're expecting their final report. Uh, will come out very shortly. Shane, can human analysis of a report, can it be impartial? I mean, they are human, so don't they bring their own slant to it? Yeah, that's exactly right. These are subjective reports, but what's key here is that the analysts try to look at facts on the ground as best that they can discern them. So, how many airstrikes uh, were conducted? How many facilities, like uh, an oil facility that ISIS might be using, for instance, was actually hit? And they try and use some hard data and some kind of empirical measurement to come up with what they think uh, is the best case. But you're absolutely right that there is going to be subjectivity in this. And so, this kind of falls into the area where you sometimes have friction. You know, I look at a set of facts and see one thing. You look at a set of facts and see another. But I think that these analysts are alleging something even differently. What they're saying is that when the reports would come out as saying that the airstrikes were having a very positive effect, those reports got relatively less pushback and editing than the ones that said there was a negative effect. So they started to detect a bias on the part of their own bosses, which was to look much more skeptically at one set of conclusions versus another. Is Congress looking into this? Congress is looking into it. They formed a task force comprised of three different committees, including the Intelligence and the Armed Services Committee. Uh, it's a Republican-led task force. Democrats are not participating in this. Uh, so it does have a political character to it. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but it is something, definitely, that has caught the attention of overseers in Congress. All right. What's been the general reaction in Washington to your story? Is there anger? What's, 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 what's happening? Yeah, I'd say there's been a lot of concern about it. I mean, the uh, the, uh, the Secretary of Defense has had to talk about this. The recently, uh, uh, the general who had just just stepped down as the head of Central Command has been grilled about this uh, con in congressional testimony. I think what people see when they look at this story is they hear echoes of 2002 and 2003, when, of course, we were hearing uh, warnings about Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction and intelligence reports that were conclusively telling us that he was trying to pursue some of the world's worst weapons, which, of course, turned out to be wrong, uh, and then were followed by allegations of cherry-picking of intelligence or of skewing or using a single source. So there's a real sensitivity in Washington, uh, even though that was more than a decade 
okay to go to anything that smacks of bias or altering intelligence reports when you're talking about activities in a war and in terrorist groups. So I think a lot of that reaction has been very sensitive because of this very fraught history on this kind of subject. You call this a scandal? I think it is a scandal. I mean, what really impressed us the most in our reporting was that more than 50 individual analysts had attached themselves to this complaint that went to the Pentagon Inspector General. When one analyst comes forward and alleges these kinds of things, it's significant. But when that many people sort of co-sign with it and say, yes, we also think there's a problem, that's really an uprising. And people we've talked to uh, who've worked in the intelligence community and the military for their careers say they've never seen anything like this number of people on mass rising up and saying, we think that our bosses are preventing people uh, from hearing the truth. Uh, you, you've been at this game quite a while. So how are we doing in the war against ISIS? How are we really doing? You know, I think we're actually, it's, we're actually maybe turning a corner a little bit. Um, ISIS is definitely losing control of some key portions of its territory. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Syrian forces were recently able to get into the Syria of Palmyra in Syria. Um, they are now moving towards possibly even an assault on Raqqa in Syria, which is the ISIS's de facto capital. It's a little bit slower going, I think, in Iraq, but there's no doubt that the airstrikes are paying off some. There are ground forces that are there in the form of Kurdish fighters and others that are capable and some of the borders are being sealed up, too, to make it harder for ISIS to get supplies and, importantly, to get recruits in. That said, we can look at the attacks in Paris and in Brussels and understand, I mean, I think quite viscerally, that ISIS has this ambition and this capability to strike outside of its self-declared caliphate in Iraq and Syria. And I think this shows ISIS to be a very nimble organization. Right when we think that things are going well on the ground and maybe they're losing territory, they can start ramping up attacks overseas. So they're not to be underestimated. If we don't know really what to believe, if analysts are forced out for telling the truth as they see it, uh, what kind of issue will this be in the election? I don't know how prominently it's going to feature in the election, because I think, frankly, that there are these questions about what should U.S. policy be in Syria and Iraq writ large, and what should our posture be towards terrorist attacks in the West. That said, I mean, there are definitely lawmakers on the Hill right now who do see this as potentially an election issue. They feel that if they can hang this on the Obama administration and say that the administration has somehow created a climate uh, in which truth-telling is frowned upon, uh, that that could be a political issue. I'm more skeptical of that. I think this is very focused on sort of the intelligence community, and in Washington it's having a lot of ripples. Um, we'll see. But I think that the bigger questions of the U.S. commitment in Syria and, frankly, whether we're going to have to put ground troops are going to probably figure more prominently in the election. Thank you, Shane. Very informative. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Larry. Shane Harris, senior correspondent for The Daily Beast and author of War, The Rise of the Military Internet Complex.